Okay, we're back again, and I'm going to show you a different way to determine the polarization direction. And you can do this on a multimeter, and I'll show you how to do that. And you can do this using an oscilloscope, and I'll show you how to do that. And in this way, we're actually not going to hit the piezoelectric material. Poor guy, he's been hit so many times. He's all blue now. Actually, let's see, he's not blue, that's just a dot polarization. Anyways, so now we're going to, I'm going to show you using heat. And uh, I haven't explained this effect so much right now because um, because the topic here has been piezoelectricity, not how piezoelectrics deal with heat. So piezoelectric materials, uh, in addition to most of the commercial ones being ferroelectric, they're also pyroelectric. Pyroelectric, what does that mean? Heat and electricity. Okay, so that ought to have to do something with the... Uh, voltage, the piezoelectric voltage. So if we have a piezoelectric material, uh, which I'll just show, uh, we, we mentioned that it has, after it's pulled, it has some spontaneous polarization. And experimentally, uh, in thermodynamics and whatnot, we know there's a certain temperature called the Curie temperature. I'll call it TC, which you can't see. OK, TC, you can see it now. Uh, let's get the pink marker. Everybody loves the pink marker. Okay, TC. And what happened? And we're gonna have po spontaneous polarization there. So basically, over time, what happens to the spontaneous? Not over time, over temperature. You can use a temperature that spontaneous polarization uh, goes to zero or some other value, and then sorry, sorry. After the te uh, Curie temperature, the spontaneous polarization goes to zero. And while we're getting closer and closer to the spontaneous part of uh, the Curie temperature, uh, which for PZT is uh, significantly higher than room temperature, uh, but as we get closer to it, we decrease in our spontaneous polarization. So how can we use that idea to measure the polarization direction, the initial polarization direction? So let's take this case. We have our piezo. and it has a certain polarization direction. We don't know it right now, but we increase the temperature. I will make uh, heat flames. We increase the temperature, and then we end up with another piezoelectric material, which is gonna have a lower polarization. And how do you get from this state to this state? This is a smaller one. Let's assume this is smaller. Let's make it smaller. Now looks smaller, right? This is bigger, this is smaller. I'll, I'll draw this is a big arrow, that's a small arrow. This got smaller. Decreased. Polarization decreased. So when the polarization decreased, what's the way that can happen? Is that, you know, the positive charges which were uh, terminating the polarization and the negative charges, they got closer together. So the positive charges go down, then we're going to get more positive appearing at the bottom. And this is the charge imbalance, that the, the, how the material balances out the charges, because the charges have to go somewhere, because we're not connecting it to an external circuit. Unlike in the case of an external circuit, the external circuit can provide charges. But in this case, the there's no external circuit, so if there's going to be a change in polarization, it's going to be uh, accounted by something, and that is that charges appearing on the surface. So here we go. So that's that. So this is positive and this is negative. So again, 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 uh, if we find ourselves measuring a positive voltage, then we know that we should put our dot there. Because remember, as in, la in the last video, the dot goes on the tail of the polarization vector. The polarization vector is not going to reverse just by heating it. Uh, so it goes on the tail of polarization. And, and, and actually, if we end up measuring uh, the other case, so this is a positive voltage we're measuring on the back, where we're going to put the dot, we want to measure the positive voltage. I'm going to say it again. We heat it. We measure a positive voltage. The dot goes on that side where you're measuring the voltage. If you heat it, and you measure a negative voltage somehow, well, not somehow, you measure the voltage difference, you know, measure the voltage difference, and it equals a negative number. And um, this was your reference voltage. Then 
you know that the polarization vector terminates there, so you put it on the other side. Apologize for the drawings, but um, I think it's clear. The, when you heat up the material, the polarization decreases. The polarization decreases, decreasing uh, results in uh, uh, balancing charge. Charges will appear on the surface. Uh, positive charges will appear where the tail of the polarization vector is, and the negative charges will appear where the uh, where the head of the polarization vector is. So if you measure positive voltage, put a dot there. If you measure negative voltage, put a dot on the other side. And remember that the dot signifies the tail of the polarization vector. So now we're actually going to do it, and we're going to do it using both a uh, function, both a oscilloscope and a uh, uh, and and a uh, multimeter. Both are handy. You may have one, may have the other one. You may just like using this. So we have our trusty heater here. It's way too big for the job. And we have our little piezo here. I'm just going to put this on the stand. We're done with that. So we have this, we see this. Okay. And, um, all right. So I'm going to start this heater. You're going to hear it now. This is not safe, or I guess if it's really hot, then d stop touching it. Okay, so basically, we're gonna set the oscilloscope to, you know, as we just saw, I, I press this button and we set it to continuous acquisition. We're gonna touch the piezo. Uh, you can't see me touching it like that. How about this there and put this here. Here's the piezo right here. I'm gonna reattach the voltage. So I'm touching the piezo just like I did last time. Remember, if I measure a positive voltage, the dot goes there. And uh, let's just see if I'm right. All these, all these equations that I've been claiming. This is the top. Remember, no dot. There's no dot on this side. The other dot, the other dot has a side that, that I labeled last time. See, that's the dot right there. Okay, it's falling over. Don't do that. There, that's the dot. And let's see if I'm. Let's see if I if I got if I got what it takes. Okay, negative voltage, please. Yep. Okay, let, let's look, let's take a look at this. this, this, this thing. So negative voltage. Negative. Okay, you can't really see what's going on. I need to change the scale. So now I change the scale to 20 volts. I put my sensor. Or my voltage whip on the piezo. Okay, I think I might use the too high voltage. Um, let's try that again with the lower scale. Let's try 5 volts here. Or let's try 1 volt. Per division. Is that a negative voltage? Does that mean I'm right? Okay, I'm doing a good job now. This negative voltage is getting hotter now. See, piezoelectric materials are actually temperature sensitive, if you believe it or not. You should believe it because they are. Okay, this thing fell off, as I see. Things just fall around. Make sure. And then this is the this is the positive side. Yeah, where I put the dot last time. So it corresponds exactly to the force measurement I was doing. This, this makes positive voltage, doesn't it? And then, now I'm going to take this material and hit it. Positive, it goes up first, doesn't it? Doesn't it go up first? There you go. That's the second way to determine the polarization direction. Thanks for watching.